Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about uh, what the isolation point is and how to solve some problems. So if you want to follow along, this, uh, this graph is in your book on page 79. Uh, and it kind of helps us understand what's going on when we change the pH and what's happening to these molecules and gives a better idea of what the isolation point really is. So I'm going to start here at a pH of 0 and we're going to add hydroxide, uh, make the solution basic all the way up to, yeah, pH 14. So here in the pH of zero, we have this glycine in our solution, and it is, has a positive charge. And as we start adding hydroxide, uh, it's going to raise the pH of the solution until it gets to this point, uh, around a pH of 2.34, and it's going to start, or a little bit before then, it's going to this, this buffer region. It's going to start tearing protons off of this, this positively charged species to make a neutral, neutral species of glycine. By by taking this proton off the carbox carboxylic acid group. Uh, so that keeps going, you add enough hydroxide till all of this all of this positive species has been transformed into a neutral species, and it's gonna raise the pH again, we get to this region, and then it's the second buffer region where the same process is going on, only this time the hydroxide is taking hydrogen from this amine group to create a negative form of glycine. And so, what does this tell us? What are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to find the isoelectric point, and the isoelectric point is the pH at which this neutral species exists. So how do we find that? Well, what we do know from the henderson hasselbalch equation is that at this pKa, we have uh, half of our glycine is this positive form and half is this neutral form. If you go to the henderson hasselbalch equation, you see pH is equal to pKa, plus log of the ratio of concentrations uh, base to acid. Uh, if you, a little little math note, log of one is zero, so we have an equal amount of base, equal amount of acid, the pH is equal to pKa. So, when the pH is equal to the pKa here, equal amount of acid, equal amount of base. Same thing goes for the second pKa, we're gonna have an equal amount of this, in this case, now this is the acid, and this is the base. Uh, so, how are we going to find the point at which this, this exists? Well, it's actually pretty simple. What you do is you just take the average of the two pKa's. So, that's going to give us our equation for... Let me find a different color so you guys can see. It's going to be the equation for the isoelectric point Pi, which is the pH at which this species is dominant. We call the isoelectric point. Is equal to the average, so just one half by pKa1 plus pKa2. All right? I mean, that, that's simple enough. So basically, we take 2.34 plus 9.6 divided by 2. That uh, gives us like about, about 6, 5.97, I think. Uh, so this is our new equation. This is what we're dealing with. Now let's look over here. Uh, this is a problem from your notes. Uh, and it's a it's just a short short peptide. We have alanine, glutamate, glycine, and lysine. And I've drawn it all out for you so you get a better idea of what's going on. Uh, and then we have all these different pKa's for all the different all the different uh, moieties or moieties that can uh, that can affect the pH. All right, now there's a lot of information here, and it turns out a lot of it we don't really need. So the first thing to do when you're approaching this kind of problem is realize uh, you need to realize that. So for instance, for alanine. We have a pKa of 2.34 and 9.69. But you can see that since it's on the, uh, or one more thing I should note, when you have a, a peptide written this way, this is always the N-terminus, and this is always the carboxylic acid terminus, all right? So, so this amine group is free, but over here, this, carbo this carboxylic acid has been joining a peptide bond to the next uh, amino acid. So this will no longer affect the pH. So we can look at these two for alanine, these two pKa's, and we can say, all right, well, carboxylic acids are usually around two, amines are usually around nine, so we can kind of just erase this one. We have to regard this, this carboxylic acid pKa, because it's not going to affect the pH. Now let's move over to glutamate and take a look. Uh, well, let's see. This amine group is bonded, so we don't really need that. I'm seeing the carboxylic acid, but it's our group, the side chain. 
does or uh, does have a group this carboxylic carboxylic acid which is going to affect the pH. Move on to glycine. Well, both of these groups are kind of held up in amino or uh, peptide bonds, and there's no R group that's going to affect the pH, so we can just get rid of both of these. And we go to our lysine. Well, the, the amine group is tied up, but we have a side chain, and we have this carboxylic acid, which is free. So now we're left with these four pKa's, which have the potential to affect the pH. Uh, so then they're going to be either protonated or deprotonated, giving it giving the whole molecule a certain charge at a given pH. So how do we find the isoelectric point? Well, what we're looking for is where the neutral species is going to exist. So at the at the very highest pKa uh, and the very lowest pKa, they're not going to. We don't really have to consider those. We don't have to consider the two that are in the exact middle. So even if you have six pKa's, you just look at the the third and the fourth one. If you line them all up from lowest to highest, so we can uh, we can look at these and say, okay, well this this one is too acidic. It's going to be protonated. On, it's, it's going to have a charged species on either side of that of that buffer region, if we were to draw out the graph. Uh, and the same thing goes for this one, this is too high. So we're left with 9.69 and 4.25. We plug that into our equation, pKa1 and pKa2, and divide it by 1 half, and we should get, let's see, I have a calculator, I mean, you can crunch it all out. I'll check my, let's see what they tell us, 6.97. Right? And that is how you can solve for the isolation point.